Welcome to St. Mary's Harefield's Thought for the Day for Thursday the 11th of June. The American mission hymn writer Francis von Alstein, uh, Fanny Crosby for short, wrote over 8,000 hymns and gospel songs. Our opening hymn today, which she wrote, focuses our attention on God's glory, God's sacrificial love, God's redemption and forgiveness, and God's higher and greater hope. To God be the glory, great things he hath done, so loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Let us pray. To you be glory today, Lord, for the gift of life, for the richness of love, and for the gift of forgiveness. Help us to live this day with praise in our hearts and love in our actions. Amen. Today we continue our look at Psalms in the Bible. I have to be very selective because I'm cutting down 150 psalms to 25. So we're only looking at a sixth of all the psalms that there are. So far we found that Psalm 1 depicts two pathways through life. Psalm 8 pictures the greatness of creation and the place that human beings occupy in it. Yesterday we considered the best known psalm of all, Psalm 23, The Lord's My Shepherd. And today, we look at Psalm 32, where we find something about forgiveness. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. I did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. 
Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, who have no understanding but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord, and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. The Psalms cover a thousand years of Israel's history. Although their authorship is slightly reflected in the way they're all grouped together, it isn't that clear. They're not arranged chronologically, and we often don't have the details we'd like to have on the background to each psalm. Now, why did I mention all that? Well, because Psalm 32, the one we're looking at today, should really come after Psalm 51, which comes much later. Psalm 51 is a powerful psalm of King David's confession. He confesses his adultery with Bathsheba and the murder of Bathsheba's husband, Uriah the Hittite, as part of the cover-up that David had planned and organised. So Psalm 51 is a heartfelt confession of David, and Psalm 32, this psalm, is a David's joy at finding, discovering God's forgiveness for him. If we can find the time to read Psalm 51 in conjunction with today's thought, it will give us a more complete picture. Forgiveness is a big theme in the Bible. It's a very big theme in the Christian faith, with Jesus' death on the cross. Whether it's the biggest theme is a debatable question, but it's certainly of major importance in life. Relationships require constant forgiveness. We have to forgive and be forgiven by others. We have to forgive ourselves, and we need to find forgiveness from God. Psalm 32 reflects the joy, liberation, experience, release of finding God's forgiveness. We can almost feel the emotion in David's spirit as we read the words. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. David is blessed, deeply happy, to discover that God has covered his sins. God isn't looking at what David has done wrong, and David isn't counting it against him. God isn't counting it against David. God is not writing with red pen in the black book of David's life. Then we read this. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. and You forgave the guilt of my sin. We examine the historical details of David's sin in 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12, we'll see that David only confesses what he did when confronted by the prophet Nathan. But he says here in Psalm 32 that when he didn't fess up, as the expression goes these days, his guilt weighed him down. He carried heaviness around with him until he decides to let it all come out. Then the floodgates break and David finds enormous release and forgiveness. Not everything is dealt with in Psalms 51 and 32. What I mean is that people are affected by the consequences of David's actions. Bathsheba is wronged and becomes pregnant. The child dies. Uriah, the totally innocent party in all of this, is killed. Turmoil seems to break loose in David's family. Yes, there's forgiveness discovered and celebrated in this psalm, but it doesn't justify the wrong that was done in the first place. But David's heart is now so deeply changed that he's now a different person. He would think twice, in fact more than twice, about repeating his behaviour in the future. 
David finds that God is his hiding place. He's safe with him. He says, you will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. He then offers advice to others as he addresses God. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. It's worth praying to God. And in words of encouragement that come from God to each of us, he says this, Don't be like the horse or mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle. Don't wait to be forced into confession, David says, from his own experience. Confess willingly. Take it from me, he says. I can recommend it. There is one interesting corollary that's worth mentioning. David marries Bathsheba. They have a child that lives. His name is Solomon, the next king of Israel. God can bring good things out of messy situations. Lord, we confess to you today that we are not the people we should be, that we carry within us burdens of heaviness and regret. Please bring to us the blessing of release, the assurance of your forgiveness and covering love, the joy of being free from guilt, and the possibility of new beginnings. Amen. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name I come to you to share his love as he told me to. He said, freely, freely you have received. Freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I live. We pray for the current situation with regard to UK schools, especially for those at critical stages in their education. We pray for solutions to be found to seemingly intractable problems at this time. We pray for continuing wisdom and solidarity as we continue to come out of lockdown. And we pray for those who are ill today, fewer with COVID-19, but we remember them and others known to us personally in the moment of quiet. Remember those who have died. And we pray for those who are grieving in the valley of the shadow of death, especially any that are known to us personally. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth, 
and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The great hymn writer Isaac Watts had a particular gift. He was able to be serious and to address serious issues, but not depressing. He was faithful and true to scripture, but creative in the way he combines his words together. His hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, is an example of this. It's able to lift our spirits while we focus on the cross of Jesus. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. With her whole realm of nature mine, that were an offering far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. We're able to keep uh, St Mary's Church open next week, from next Monday onwards. If you can help to sit in and be part of that and to help with the whole process, that would be enormously helpful. So if you could let us know in the office, please, we, that would be great. You can email, you can phone, whatever. Uh, just let us know you can do maybe a two-hour stint at some point in the week to make that possible. And it's going to be, of course, a regular thing as part of the next thing for the church to offer the community. Heavenly Father, thank you that with every ending there is a new beginning and every sin can be forgiven. Help us to find in our own experience today the joy that King David discovered three millennia ago, the joy available to a world that needs a new start right now. And may the blessing and forgiveness of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, and those you love today and always. Amen. <laughs>